Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and wellness. This week we are going to cover off-gassing. So it's kind of a buzzword, we hear it all the time, especially when we're talking about VOCs and just so that you know, everything off-gasses. So even though everything off-gasses, we still need to be really aware of what is being off-gassed in our homes because our homes are so enclosed and we don't bring in as much fresh air as we should. And so the off-gassing VOCs become very concentrated and then it causes body burden. So I'm gonna share with you this week what off-gassing is, what products in your home and materials in your home are off-gassing the most, and then some things you can do at home to actually reduce off-gassing. We're gonna talk about some habits that you can start implementing at home, and then some just overall healthy house practices that will really help reduce off-gassing inside your home. So I'm sure that you have heard the term off-gassing. I use it all the time. But if you're like I was, you may also not really know what it means or to be honest, how it's affecting your body and your space in really big ways. I really think that once we understand a type of toxin or in this case, how a toxin gets into our homes, the easier it becomes to reduce it overall. And I think that maybe a little part of me never really wants to know about a toxin, kind of like I'm watching a suspenseful movie with like one eye open and half my face covered. I want to know, but I don't want to know all of the awful side effects. And because I know that my home contains plenty of toxins, I know my kids and myself are certainly exposed to our fair share. So then I kind of think about it and have to remind myself that we really just do the best to limit the toxins we can. And while sometimes it doesn't feel like that's enough, it most certainly is doing a huge favor to our health and wellness. And to be honest, if you don't know about toxins or about chemicals that you could reduce in really easy ways, you're probably missing a huge opportunity to create a healthier home. So in this video and in the blog post this week, I'm gonna take you through what off-gassing is and how to actually create a climate at home that limits off-gassing from your current products and materials. So off-gassing is a process that occurs for years after a product is made and it's the release of chemicals in vapor form. So oftentimes you can detect a strong off-gassing by the odor that is put out, but even when the fumes have gone away, there is still off-gassing going on. It's just more subtle. So essentially, almost everything off gases, trees outside, plants, etc. But the real problem is that the off gassing that happens indoors is obviously stronger and the vapors have less space to go and so they build up to really concentrated levels. And so while we're all at risk of off gassing exposure, kids and those with weakened immune systems are at the most risk for suffering symptoms of exposure. Short-term exposures can cause headaches, respiratory irritation, sore throat, nosebleeds, and lightheadedness. And long-term exposure has been associated with respiratory illness, hormone disruption, damage to kidneys, damage to liver, and increased risk of cancer, and probably more as we continue to learn more and more. So you may have heard the notion, like I said before, that everything off gases in your home from plants to carpet. And while this is true, there are some products and materials that off gas a lot more than others. And so we're gonna take a look at the big ones today. So carpet, everything from the backing to the pad underneath the carpet, any adhesives used in the carpet or installation, they all produce VOCs. And while some states have laws that are designed to reduce VOC emissions, they are most likely still plenty of toxins off-gassing into your space. 
vinyl contains polyvinyl chloride and any adhesives used with the flooring will probably contain formaldehyde, both of which will off-gas into your home. Vinyl flooring is one of the worst materials to bring into your home, and it's often installed in bedrooms, living areas, and so the sheer volume of the material becomes a problem as well. Polyurethane foam, memory foam, these off-gas a whole lot of VOCs, including formaldehyde and toluene. So what's problematic with a mattress is that we are generally in the closest proximity to the mattress than any other material in our home. On top of it, we're usually on the mattress for long periods of time, which really just creates kind of a disaster for our body and our immune system as they have to work overtime while they're supposed to be healing and restoring from the day that we just had. So pressed wood furniture is the biggest culprit here when it comes to VOC. So when we're talking furniture, that's what I'm talking about is pressed wood furniture. So the amounts of wood that are pressed together are usually held together by adhesive and that adhesive generally contains formaldehyde which is a carcinogenic VOC. So upholstery can also contain formaldehyde in the fabric as well as PFOAs that are added to treat the textile fabric for water resistance and stain resistance and it's a chemical that we really want to avoid. So textiles such as pillows, blankets, curtains, they're again often treated with chemical solutions to keep them from wrinkling and to keep them resistant to stains and resistant to water. So these products are usually in areas that are warmer because we're seeing them in bedrooms, in living spaces. If they're on the wall, they're probably by a register. So they're getting really warm. This environment encourages them to off gas at an even higher rate than if they were in a cool and dry climate. And then finally, cleaning products that contain fragrances to cover up those harsh scents of the solvents and the chemicals used are gonna contain VOCs along with the chemicals and solvents used as a cleaner. So products will off-gas when being used, but remember that they can also off-gas when they're being stored as well. So it's very important to take a look at this and really see where you can limit these off-gassing components in your home. So most of the time, VOCs are the type of toxin that we talk about off-gassing. So VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, are a type of toxin. And there are a lot of specific VOCs that we are either exposed to in large quantities or that are particularly dangerous to our health. And here's a list of the big ones. VOCs, there's just so many, I couldn't even list them all here, but these are the big ones that are within our home. So formaldehyde is carcinogenic. It changes the lung function in a negative fashion. It can cause skin rashes and eye irritation. Toluene is known to cause inflammation of the skin. It has been linked to anxiety, muscle fatigue, liver and kidney damage, nerve damage, even insomnia. And phthalates, that's another big one we talk about a lot. It's been shown to cause insulin resistance, allergies, asthma, overweight, and obesity issues, hormonal disruption, lower IQ, adverse effects on neurodevelopment. So there's a lot going on with that one that we really try to avoid and it's in a lot of products besides our building materials and home materials. Acetone is another one. It can cause sore throat, respiratory irritation, nausea, fast heart rate, confusion, damage to skin, headache. Again, this is a VOC that off gases. Chemical flame retardants, which are generally we're going to see them in mattresses and pillows in upholstery and foam has a lot of scary things that come with it neurological damage hormone disruption increased risk of cancer body burden thyroid disruption reproductive problems that's something that i think if you can really pay attention to that again that's a really good place to start in your home because generally there's a few big things that you're going to need to replace but it doesn't go much beyond that 
benzene is the last one, and that causes skin and respiratory irritation, blood disorders, damage to the reproductive system, anemia, damage to the immune system, and also carries an increased risk of cancer. So after all those scary things, I want to give you some peace of mind that you can create an environment that reduces off-gassing, and that is what we're going to finish up with here. So the type of environment that produces the most off-gassing is one that is warm and humid. So humidity encourages products and materials to off-gas at a much higher rate in comparison to a dry climate. Heat is another way that you can encourage off-gassing. So essentially, an environment with an ideal healthy house humidity level of 35% to 40% is the best way to create conditions that discourage off-gassing in your home. And rooms that get humid like laundry rooms, bathrooms, or kitchens, you want to be sure to use a vented fan to pull that moisture out of the room and expel it outdoors while you're in there. There are also spaces to be especially aware of toxic materials. If you can make sure humid rooms of your home have the fewest toxic products or materials, you'll be able to limit off-gassing in the space when the humidity levels are high just due to normal use and human habits. And while I don't want you to think you have to create a cold home environment, limiting the amount of time your home is extremely warm can help reduce the amount of VOCs that are being off-gassed. So this is especially true of your bedroom, which is where you likely spend a large portion of a 24-hour day. And then finally, get your home as much fresh air as possible. So the most important thing you can do for the health of your home is to practice natural ventilation as much as possible. This is gonna allow VOCs to escape outside while also diluting any toxins left inside to reduce the amount of concentration. A couple other things that you can do is if you have you know, conventional carpet or vinyl flooring, chances are the off-gassing levels are pretty high. And the closer in proximity you are to the floor or the closer your kids or your babies are to the floor, the higher risk of off-gassing exposure. And so, I mean, to be honest, while I really think it's impossible to stop our kids and our babies and our toddlers from hanging out on the floor, you have a couple of options. So you could replace the flooring if possible. There's some great non-toxic options. I have lots on my website and I promote a lot of really great brands that are non-toxic. That's an expensive one. You could also use a non-toxic rug on top of your flooring to kind of give a little barrier between your kids and the flooring. That's kind of the second best option. You could also apply a VOC blocker to stop off-gassing. AFM Safecoat has a great option for this. I personally have not tried it myself, and so I don't know what the application is like, but I have watched lots of videos and spoken to them, and it is a very simple process. It does take a little bit of time as it's a three-step process, but it definitely will stop that off-gassing if you have carpet. Another thing you can do is really limit your pressed wood purchases or stop them all together if you can. It might be a bit much, you know, to expect you to replace your current furniture. You can maybe make it your goal just to stop purchasing pressed wood moving forward and opt for solid wood furniture if you can. This might mean looking for older used furniture or buying unfinished furniture or custom made furniture, which I talk about all of these on my blog. And then as you slowly replace furniture as it wears out or as your budget kind of allows, use the same philosophy to purchase natural solid wood. So eventually you'll get out a lot of sources of formaldehyde and other toxic VOCs while bringing in healthy furniture. Again, you can always use a VOC blocker. So we talked about this with the carpeting, but you can also use a VOC blocker on plywood in your home. So if you have like an unfinished subfloor or you're in the middle of a home remodel project, this is a great option. You can certainly apply a VOC blocker to stop some of the off-gassing that's currently going on in your home. They also make a VOC blocker for finished surfaces and other pressed wood like on furniture backs and things like that. And I have more information on my blog post about 
about VOC blockers and some links to some helpful information for you. And then finally, just try to stop using harsh chemicals. So anything that's intended to remove paint, remove varnish, even nail polish, generally has some pretty harsh chemicals in it. Acetone is in many of these removers and it brings a lot of negative health effects with it. So do your best to look for products that are low toxin and if you need to dissolve or remove any sort of substance, keep that in mind. So let's be honest and just agree that VOCs can sound like a scary thing when it comes to toxins inside your home, but I really want you to remember that anything you can do to reduce them, even if it's something very small, is going to be a huge benefit to your health. And eventually you'll get around to those big projects too in order to reduce VOCs. I know some of these were big. And then that's just going to give you more momentum to move forward. So sometimes you just have to start small and that is 100% okay. So as always, thank you so much for being here. I love sharing these videos with you every week. I hope you were able to find something that you could do in your own space that will help reduce toxins, reduce some of that off-gassing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, I would love it if you would join me here every week where I share a new healthy house tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and wellness.